I said it last week and I'll say it again. Pokemon Legends Arceus is not an open world game and it is confirmed. Let's break it all down. Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I bring you guys a brand new video today and today we're gonna dive into the world of Pokemon Legends Arceus and a little bit about BDSP as well. Of course, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl and what is going on with the fiasco that is the open world shenanigans of the next Pokemon main series games. And there's a lot to uncover here and talk about in this video. So we're gonna dive into it. Be sure to hit that like button down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new as I do post Pokemon videos every single day. And for those who didn't hear, I actually teamed up with Best Buy in the United States for the holiday season. And right now, if you guys pre-order Legends Arceus or BDSP, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, through my links in the description below. It helps out your boy Dan, aka A Drive. And there's also some pretty cool pre order bonuses. Like with Legends Arceus, you get the Growlithe Kimono, as well as 30 Heavy Balls, which in Legends Arceus function differently than Heavy Balls that we know. They actually have a higher catch rate and you just can't throw them as far. So if you guys are gonna pre order the games, it doesn't cost you anything extra to use my links and it actually helps me out a ton. Like, a lot. So pre order the games through Best Buy with my link in the description below for both Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl throughout the end of the year, and uh, you'll help your boy out a lot. Seriously, it doesn't cost you anything extra, so if you're gonna get the games, get them through my link, please. With all that out of the way, we're gonna dive into the new OLED Switch trailer, which by the way, you can use my link in the description for too once they're back in stock. But let's look at this, because there is a short clip of BDSP in this trailer. All right, I'm not gonna make this out to be any more than it really is, but let's take a look at it really quickly. New Nintendo Switch OLED has dropped, and there is a sweet shot of Dawn firing off a Thunderbolt with Pikachu. And look at that Floatzel's health bar drop. That's it, that's the trailer. That's all we got for BDSP. But I do wanna mention the couple things. One, the animation for Thunderbolt has been sped up tremendously from previous games. And look how fast that HP bar drops. Previously, the HP bars in Sinnoh were a meme because of how slow they would go. Famously, that Heracross scene close combating a Blissey and it taking approximately 10 years for the Blissey's HP bar to drop. Well, they fixed a lot of that stuff. So that's all we got for trailer stuff. Let's talk about the open world shenanigans. So this has become such a controversy that Kotaku reached out to Pokemon for confirmation regarding what is going on with the open world concept. And this kind of all started a few weeks ago with Joe Merrick tweeting about this and kind of starting that conversation. I made a video about it saying that, hey, I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be a true open world game. And then ultimately it kind of got picked up by even more media outlets. And now we have an official statement from the Pokemon company stating, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, Jubilee Village will serve as the base for surveying missions. After receiving an assignment or a request, and preparing for their next excursion, players will set out from the village to study one of the various open areas of the Hisui region. After they finish the survey work, they need to return once more to prepare for their next task. We look forward to sharing more information about exploring the Hisui region soon. So Kotaku reports on this, the Pokemon company obviously makes a comment about it, and now the comparisons to Breath of the Wild are kind of shot, and it's more so a comparison to the Monster Hunter story series, more so than Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, how much of a big deal is this? That That's really up to you to decide, right? I think a lot of us kind of went into this thinking that Pokemon Legends Arceus is gonna be this massive open world game where you kind of get plopped in, you can kind of do whatever you want in whatever direction you want, but it's very clear that that's not gonna be the case, but rather Legends Arceus is gonna be massive open world areas that are all kind of separate from each other, right? Not just one big open world, but rather more so think like wild area, but much bigger and a bunch of those. That's more what it's gonna be. Now I'll be real, this doesn't really change anything for me personally. I'm still excited for the game. I still think it's gonna be awesome. And the fact that there's like kind of transition points or kind of roadblocks in the way doesn't really impact me. You know, I think of a game like Skyrim, which to me is open world. I mean, you do load into dungeons, but it's an open world game. Um, and that game you do still have, while you don't necessarily have like roadblocks in the way by HMs or ride Pokemon. You can't just roll up into, you know, the sub, you know, the underground. What is what is the name of that place? I can't even remember it. Where all the Nern root is. I can't you can't just roll up underground and all them Dwemers, they'll just wreck you at the beginning of the game, right? So that's kind of locked off by powerful, you know, foes. You know, I, I'm expecting Legends Arceus to have different segments where you have to, you know, unlock Basque Legion through doing this survey task and then you can access this next area and so on and so forth. So obviously big comments there. Joe Merrick actually chimes in here and this is some pretty interesting stuff. He says, let's talk about the open world debate for the side. Let's look at one of the five open areas we know of, which is the Obsidian Fieldlands. It's got 34 different sub areas in it. 
To compare, the Wild Area had 18, the Isle of Armor had 17, and the Crown Tundra had 15. So this is essentially double the size of what the Wild Area is, and that's just one of the five open areas that we know of for this game. So if you think about this, you take what the Wild Area is, and you say, okay, this area is essentially double that. You maybe give a little bit of leeway. We're looking at something that could essentially be 10 to 15 times bigger than what the wild area was when all is said and done. Uh, what does that make you feel? I don't know. I think that that's pretty cool. Um, that's a pretty big area. Like the wild area is a very large location. Like going from one end to the other of the wild area is, is pretty big. I think it just depends on what's going on inside, what's actually taking place. Joe goes on to say that granted, they're varying of size, just like the wild area ones, but this area is the, basically the equivalent of two wild areas. And if there's five similar sizes, then that'll be a lot of areas to explore, which is where we get to the 10 or 15, essentially, uh, you know, wild areas, right? If, if you kind of just break out the math. And Joe goes on to say that if you're wondering how I got to the conclusion of the five areas, I came to the conclusion because if you look in the uh, the Legends Pokedex, it lists categories, and there's one for one space for Obsidian Fieldlands, and then there's actually four gaps. So that's where we're getting that. So he's essentially making presumptions that there's going to be five sections of the, uh, the kind of five open areas that we can access throughout the game. So that's that's really it for the open area and open world discussion uh, in terms of how that plays out. Again, I don't personally think it's that big of a deal. I think at the end of the day, I'm still going to enjoy the game. I'm still excited to play the game. It's just kind of what it is. I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, I enjoyed the Isle of Armor. I enjoyed the Crown Tundra. I think segmenting it off into five sections is not the end of the world, in my opinion. That's just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Are you upset about this? Do you care? Does it make any difference to you? Again, it doesn't make any difference to me at this point. I think it's just an, a naming thing, and I think it's just about setting our expectations appropriately going into the game for sure. Now, pivoting off of that, Centro Leagues has been very active lately, and we always want to take Centro with a grain of salt. They tend to kind of throw darts at the dartboard and hope they get uh, a bullseye. Uh, but nonetheless, they are uh, kind of looked at a lot in this community and they have come out about the open world conversation as well. And then they pivoted off of that and said, in, in kind of contrast to the negative news of the lack of open world, they said, but there are still around 20 new Pokemon and forms to be revealed. That's exciting though. Now, to reference, we've only gotten about five, right? We got the, the Weird Deer, we got the Basket Legion, we got the Braviary, we got the Cleaver, and we've got the Hisuian uh, Growlithe. I think that's all five. So for there to be another 20 or so, that actually is pretty cool. We'll have to wait and see what time tells in terms of this. What will we get? What do you guys want to see? I see a lot of whispers about Dunspars, some Pokedex entries, maybe hinting at different things. Excited to see kind of what actually shakes out in Pokemon Legends Arceus when all is said and done. But uh, Centro saying 20 new Pokemon and forms. I think there's going to be a trailer soon, maybe by the end of the month. And that's really that, guys. That's what we're going to talk about for today. We've got the open world conversation, maybe some new Pokemon forms. 20 new forms would be pretty sick. And uh, like I said, this doesn't really change anything for me, but I think it's important to communicate this and to set everyone's expectations appropriately. So no need to sound the alarms on Pokemon Legends Arceus. I think it's still going to be dope, and I'm very excited about it. So that's that, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And of course, hit that like button down below if you guys enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you are going to pre-order or pick up Legends Arceus or Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, check the links in the description and pick them up from Best Buy if you're in the USA. It helps me out a ton. When I say a lot, it helps out a lot. I'm not even kidding. And it costs you nothing extra. Plus, you can get that pre-order bonus for Legends Arceus, the Hisui and Growlithe kimono outfit, plus those heavy balls, so don't miss out on that. Thank you guys so much. My name is Dan. I also go by A-Drop, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.